Welcome to Vision of China. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has once again become a pivotal figure in the national economic conversation with her latest forecasts. Earlier this year, Yellen confidently dismissed predictions of an imminent recession, highlighting the enduring strength of American workers and the effectiveness of President Biden's economic policies. She emphasized that the economy has not only sustained growth, but has also increased the production of goods and services beyond pre-pandemic levels. Yellen's optimistic stance effectively gave her an early advantage in the ongoing economic debate. However, beneath Yellen's positive outlook lies a more concerning reality. The primary engine keeping the U.S. economy afloat has been unprecedented government spending. The Biden administration has accumulated a deficit equivalent to 6.33% of GDP, essentially propping up the economy. This phenomenon, often referred to as a zombie economy, relies heavily on continuous borrowing to prevent an immediate downturn. While Yellen acknowledges that a collapse has been averted thus far, the long-term sustainability of this approach remains highly questionable, with underlying economic vulnerabilities still present. Yellen has reiterated her stance with another bold proclamation. There is no recession on the horizon, and the U.S. economy is on track for a soft landing. She points to the lack of significant layoffs and asserts that the economy is firmly in a recovery phase. However, this optimism is met with skepticism when contrasted with other key economic indicators. For example, the yield curve, a historically reliable predictor of recessions, has begun to flatten, a trend that typically signals a potential recession within the next year. This flattening challenges Yellen's reassurances, suggesting that the economic outlook may not be as rosy as she portrays. Yellen's historical accuracy in economic forecasting also warrants scrutiny. Her previous misjudgment of transitory inflation serves as a cautionary example of the risks associated with relying solely on her predictions. Looking back to 2007, she anticipated a smooth economic landing and robust consumer spending just before the financial crisis struck. These past inaccuracies indicate that Yellen's current optimism should be approached with caution, as fundamental economic structures appear to be weakening despite her positive statements. The precarious state of the U.S. economy is further highlighted by movements in the bond market. The yield curve, a critical economic indicator, suggests that investors are bracing for an economic downturn. The yield on the two-year U.S. Treasury note has fallen to its lowest level in two years, reflecting expectations of significant rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. Such aggressive rate reductions, comparable to four standard cuts within a short time frame, are typically responses to severe economic distress, directly contradicting Yellen's upbeat outlook. This disparity underscores a growing tension between official statements and market sentiment. Corporate America is also displaying signs of stress, undermining Yellen's narrative of a robust economy. Corporate bankruptcies have surged, with August witnessing 63 companies filing for bankruptcy, up from 49 in July. This increase includes major firms with substantial assets and liabilities, indicating broader economic troubles. From January to August, there have been 452 large-scale bankruptcies, nearing the levels observed during the 2020 pandemic lockdowns. These bankruptcies span both public and private sectors that drive the real economy, signaling declining consumer demand and squeezed profit margins across various industries, particularly in consumer discretionary and staples. Consumer behavior further mirrors these economic challenges. Companies like Dollar General have seen their stock prices plummet by 32%, with the CEO warning about financially constrained customers who are limiting their spending to as little as $1 per item. Even essential sectors such as food and groceries are not immune, with 25 bankruptcies in consumer staples, the fourth most distressed sector. This trend suggests that consumer demand is not as robust as Yellen claims raising questions about the sustainability of the current economic recovery. When consumers begin cutting back on both non-essential and essential goods, it signals deeper financial strain within the population, weakening the foundation of economic growth. 
government spending, while initially effective in supporting the economy, is now reaching a point of diminishing returns. The Biden administration's commitment to borrowing nearly a quarter trillion dollars this quarter underscores the reliance on deficit spending to sustain economic stability. However, the effectiveness of this strategy is waning, as evidenced by Intel's decision to eliminate 15,000 jobs despite substantial government investment. The company's declining cash flow and increased competition from cheaper imports demonstrate that government intervention alone cannot indefinitely sustain the economy. This scenario highlights the limitations of deficit spending as a tool for economic stabilization, particularly when underlying economic fundamentals are weak. The broader consumer landscape paints a concerning picture. U.S. consumer borrowing surged by $25.5 billion in July, marking the highest increase in 18 months and indicating that Americans are increasingly living beyond their means. Delinquencies on auto loans and credit card debt have risen, reflecting financial strain among consumers. Auto loan delinquencies have increased from 2.4% last year to nearly 3% this year while serious credit card delinquencies rose from 5% 12 months ago to 7.2% in the second quarter of this year. These figures reveal that more individuals are struggling to manage their debt, highlighting the fragility of consumer finances. Even if the Federal Reserve implements a 50 basis point rate cut next week, it offers limited relief to those already grappling with debt, especially if coupled with further job losses. The labor market adds another layer of concern. Over the past 18 months, U.S. payrolls have steadily declined, dropping from nearly 300,000 jobs per month to around 150,000. This 50% reduction places payroll data below pre-pandemic levels, signaling the delayed impact of higher interest rates. While government-led job creation has provided some support, the decline in private sector employment reveals underlying economic weaknesses that Yellen's optimistic projections fail to account for. This reduction in job creation is a critical indicator of the economy's health, as fewer jobs mean less disposable income and reduce consumer spending, further exacerbating economic challenges. Small businesses are not exempt from these difficulties. A significant portion of small companies across the country has experienced severe earnings declines, comparable to the struggles faced during the 2020 lockdowns. With 37% of small businesses reporting reduced earnings, the economy shows signs of entering a recessionary phase reminiscent of the 2008 financial crisis. Small businesses are the backbone of the economy and their struggles indicate broader systemic issues that could lead to widespread economic hardship if not addressed promptly. Despite Yellen's optimistic projections, many economic indicators suggest a different reality. Industry leaders like Jamie Dimon have warned of impending stagflation, a scenario where the economy contracts while inflation remains high. This combination poses a severe threat as it erodes purchasing power and increases living costs without the benefit of economic growth. Even as inflation trends toward the Federal Reserve's target, concerns about persistent structural inflation and job losses persist. Stagflation presents a unique and dangerous economic challenge. As traditional monetary policies designed to combat inflation may not be effective in addressing simultaneous economic contraction, political developments add another layer of uncertainty to the economic outlook. The possibility of Kamala Harris winning the presidency and implementing extensive stimulus measures could potentially rejuvenate the economy and avert a recession. However, such interventions carry their own risks, including increased government debt and the potential for further economic distortions without addressing underlying structural issues. President Biden's administration has touted the creation of over 14 million jobs and substantial advancements in manufacturing particularly in the electric vehicle battery production sector. Yet, the reality on the ground paints a different picture, with manufacturing contracting and companies like Intel facing significant financial strain despite government support. This discrepancy between political rhetoric and economic reality raises questions about the effectiveness of current policies and the true state of the U.S. economy. The narrative presented by government officials and policymakers often contrasts sharply with the grim economic indicators. 
Statements highlighting job creation, low unemployment rates, and rising wages seem disconnected from the reality of declining manufacturing output and increasing layoffs in the private sector. This discrepancy suggests a disconnect between political rhetoric and actual economic conditions. Raising questions about the effectiveness of current policies and the true state of the U.S. economy. It underscores the importance of looking beyond official statements to understand the real economic landscape.